Hello, beautiful people. Have you ever been in the middle of a hot boss encounter and said to yourself, wow, I really wish I were skilling right now? No, me neither. Have you ever been deep into a mining grind and said to yourself, man, I really wish I were bossing right now? Yes, me too. What I'm getting at is this is a Croesus guide, so sit back, relax, and let's go over the basics. You can smell this boss a mile away. Croesus is a fungi with no sense of humor who was buried in Seniston for centuries before Bic unleashed his foul stench upon the world again. Did I mention this boss stinks? You'll also see a familiar face in this putrid arena. Gorvek, once foe spitting hot fire at us, now shouts at us from the safety of the balcony while we do all the hard work. I guess we should be used to it at this point, but he can teleport you to your spot if you right click him so I guess he's helping out in his own way. Now that you know the main characters, let's talk about what we're bringing. You don't want to have too much junk in the trunk for this boss if you know what I'm saying. Cut down on the inventory items that you can lug resources around the instance. You'll need a minimum of 16 inventory spaces for you, but maybe a few more in case things happen. And things do happen. So many things. I bring a tool for each node in case those things I was talking about earlier happen and I need to help out somewhere. Bring your best pickaxe, hatchet, and a magic butterfly net. The crystal rod does not work for fishing because that would be too convenient. You can use a fishing rod automatic, or you can go without and double fist those fishing resources. There's no judgment in Croesus. You can use the hone perk to gather resources faster, but if not, that's okay. Put on some slow jams, dim the lights, and enjoy the moment. There's no rush. You'll also need to bring a few super restores because, like I said, things happen. When you get hit, your stats drain. If your stats drop it low all the way to the flow, you get yeeted. I also bring runes for Crystal Mask. Mask up and stay six feet away from your teammates to stop the attack of the Jelly Blobs. You'll also need something to get rid of Sticky Feet if you get it. Nobody likes Sticky Feet. Proteon Logs are goaded because of their stack ability. If you're swimming in GP, you can use an Orthan Furnace Core or a Sauna's Fire Torch. You can also just use the Timber resources from the instance if you're down bad. We've all been there. There are some other things to consider when taking down the Rancid Ruffian. You can sip on a Perfect Plus Potion or a Perfect Juju Fishing or Woodcutting Potion before you start if you want to catch a Skilling Buzz. A Charged Pawn Effect Shadow Ring will reduce that nasty stat drain and if you overcharge it, you can leave it in the bank. We love a good passive effect. Skilling Auras, Outfits, and Familiars are nice if you have them. If not, find some good friends who accept you for you and keep on keeping on. No friends? That's okay. You don't need them. Join a public instance. Now that you have your preset, let's talk about the funky fight. There are four corners in this toxic wasteland. The wood cunning corner in the southwest is a giant spooter that looks like a certain eight-legged boss in the game. The mining corner to the southeast is a giant mole who has definitely seen better days. In the fishing corner to the northeast sits what remains of a leviathan. It doesn't look too good. Finally, the northwest hunter corner holds a Dagonoth body adi adi. Poor thing never stood a chance against this malodorous monster. These fallen beasts are the nodes. Each node will have two super alive and healthy looking branches and one that has been through it. Always gather resources from the branches with life in them. During the kill, there is a bar over top of the node. Gather resources until you can't anymore because the node ran out. Run that node dry. If any nodes are active when you go to wipe out Croesus, you'll do less damage, and we only deal big booty damage here. When the node has nothing else to give, you can pull resources from the bodies of the poor unfortunate souls behind the node. Don't worry, they won't feel a thing. The skilling nodes grow back over time. To stop this, click on 10 resources in your inventory to turn them into rot. Then click on any of the branches of the node to rot the node and slow the regrowth. Handling rot doesn't sound fun, but if you don't do this, the kill takes a very spicy turn for the worst. You can rot before you take your resources somewhere else, or when you get to where you're going. The group should talk about these things beforehand. If you're in a public instance, godspeed. Croesus is a punk who prefers to attack without moving. That's why he's so bottom heavy. He doesn't do much cardio and only uses his arms, but that's okay. We like our bosses thick. You can see where he lifts his arms up and flings mechanics at us without even looking. You have to avoid these or suffer the consequences. Just kidding, you can't die here. There are no consequences other than not getting loot, and you definitely didn't want GP anyways, right? This boss doesn't send you to death's office, he knocks you out and teleports you to the balcony to watch the rest of the fight. So what is he throwing around? First there's the smoke. Smoke bad. Step out of the bad. Keep those toes out of the smoke. 
Next, there's the Ferry Rings, the free taxi service of Croesus. They'll take you for a ride free of charge, but there's a catch. You end up in a random corner. Not the best service if you ask me, but you can't expect good service with a boss like Croesus. Now let's talk about the Jelly Blobs. These orange nuisances want to give you the sweet, sweet hug of death. Have your crystal mask up and you'll be protected by the invisible shield of honor. If not, they will absolutely body you. In between the other mechanics, you will get smoke dropped on you. You know what to do. Say no and walk away. Croesus will also throw a mushroom at your head. Very rude. Just anticipate the hit like the legend you are or freedom after you get whacked. Either way, you're fine. You also might get Sticky Feet, also known as World Guardian's Foot. There's no better way to deal with Sticky Feet than burning them. For legal purposes, I should note that I'm not a doctor. Click it with logs in your inventory and you'll be good as new. Finally, there's the mid. The sweet, juicy mid. This gives you a metric crap ton of contribution points, so make sure to run up and click that thing. If you don't, you'll still definitely get a drop, because legends don't need points to get rares. RNG is pumping through your veins. Croesus repeats these mechanics throughout the fight, so get used to them, or just wang it. What could go wrong? Mechanics are fun and all, but what about getting around? There are some spicy mushroom fields of death and despair in between the nodes on the east and west side of the arena. Make a wrong move and lose some of your resources, or potentially end up watching the fight from the balcony. Nobody puts the World Guardian on a balcony. To get across the mushroom field, you can do a few things. If you're a legend, which we already know you are, you can walk to the edge, surge, and bladed dive at the same time to get to the other side. There is also a walkable path. Take the scenic route, stop and smell the roses. You could also walk a little and then surge the rest of the way. On the north and south sides of the arena, there are some mushroom walls. All except one of the mushrooms in each wall are super spicy. Find the sparkling one, climb over the special shroom, and be on your way. Stay away from the spicy mushrooms. Shrooms are bad for your stats, kids. Now that you know how to get around, let's talk about sending that pungent jerk back to hell. To get to the big stink, we have to repair for the four statues that are in the arena. Each statue requires 15 of two different types of resources. They need 15 resources from the nodes 1 and 2 over clockwise. If you're like me and you can't tell left from right on a good day, let me explain. The hunter statue needs 15 resources from fishing and from mining. The fishing statue needs 15 resources from mining and woodcutting. You see where I'm going with this. To the right, to the right, get your resources from the nodes to the right. Most groups have 4-8 to eight people in them. Near the statue is a deposit box. This holds extra resources. In a group of 4, each person will deposit about 17 resources into that special box. Sharing is caring. Then you'll go and collect your own resources that you'll take with you. Deplete the node, rot your node if that's what you're doing, and then run World Guardian, run. Taking resources long means depositing them into the farthest statue that requires the resources. Two corners counterclockwise. That's a little confusing. Let's make it clear. If you're woodcutting, running long would have you depositing resources into the statue at fishing like you see my friend doing here. If you're hunting, running long would have you depositing resources into the statue at mining. To the right, to the right, deposit resources in the statues to the right. Now that you totally get it, it's going to be such an easy clap. After depositing long, if you're in a group of four, grab some yummy resources that your friend left you in the box and run them short. That's one spot, counterclockwise, fishing the hunter, hunter to woodcutting. You get it. After the resources are deposited, start repairing the statue. Statues that need resources will tell you which ones they need if they are missing any. Just give it a little tickle. I mean click. Silly me. The bars above the statue also indicate this. When it is full, the bar turns blue. Repair the statue and then wait until your friends are ready. When all of the statues are fully repaired, pray at the statues. The middle will open up and you can click it. Make sure your stats are fully restored for that big DPS energy. Now you can AFK mid. Dance, sing a song, drink some coffee, play with your dog. The options are endless. Don't want to watch? The middle sparkles. We like shiny things. If you see green or white sparkles, click them to deal more damage to the boss. Just don't click the red sparkles. These heal Croesus, and you mustn't heal Croesus. Here's a quick summary of the fight. Here you can see the locations of the nodes and the resources needed to repair the statues. This is a long run from woodcutting. This is a short run from woodcutting. 
I talked about a group of four, but in a group with more people, just decide who wants to do what and make things work. Cross is magic, baby. If a node has two people, one can run long and one can run short. If there's a group of five, one can run resources. Play around with it and see what you like. Try rotting at the end, try rotting at the start. Feel the rhythm, feel the rhyme. Come on, boys, it's Croesus time. Now let's watch a kill to see how everyone moves. While we're watching, let me talk about those contribution points that I mentioned earlier. You get contribution points for, well, contributing. Every action during the fight gives you points. Clicking the sparkles at the end, harvesting from nodes, rotting nodes, contributing resources to statues, helping your friend deal with their sticky feet, everything. You need 60 points to get a unique drop and 420 points to get max rare drop rolls. That's right, Croesus is 420 friendly. The mid will give you the most points so when you see that sweet, juicy fungus appear, run to it as fast as your feet will allow you. Surge, double surge, bladed dive, anything necessary to touch that shroom. Congratulations! Now that you're a crowspert, go out there and get skill bossing! 
you'll definitely have full crippling within the first 200 kills because I believe in Croesus miracles. Thanks for watching, and if this guide helped you in any way, hit that subscribe button. See you next time!